What's up guys, it's Sean from Window Tint Warriors and today I'm gonna to show you how to tint a front door on a frameless door car. This is a BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, so it does have the frameless doors and I'm also gonna show you how to deal with the dot matrix on the back of the door as well as we're gonna do a separate video with the back door that has a dot matrix on both sides. And I know that's a big problem when it comes to tinting BMWs, so I'm gonna show you how to kind of deal with that issue in a very easy way. But let's get to the outside prep. I'll show you guys how to properly cut and shift a frameless door as well as shrink it to get it to fit perfectly inside with a nice micro edge. The first thing we're gonna have to do on any frameless door car is trick the latch because the window does shift up and down. And I like to lock the door just in case so we don't untrick it while we're working on it. Spray the outside, give it a quick clean. I can tell right off the bat that this window was tinted previously. I can see glue on the inside and uh, we're gonna have to pay close attention to removing that so we don't get any contamination within the installation. So we'll go ahead with the inside prep and then we'll go over the hand cutting techniques. So as with any other door window, whether it be frameless or framed, when you're prepping with a razor blade, I'll go over this very quickly. You wanna stay away from hitting the top edge because once you hit that edge, you'll hear a scratching noise and that'll automatically dull out the blade. So save that for last. Just get as close as you can. And on the BMWs, same with the dot matrix. Stay, with the, stay away from the dot matrix and we'll save that for last. Paying close attention, listening for anything that the, the razor hits. When it makes a noise, you know there's something on the glass and you'll have to pay extra close attention to getting that off so it doesn't get in your tint job. And there's a little bit of glue in the corner here. I'm gonna use my Ulfa knife to get down into there. Now that we've got the whole window done, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the dot matrix. Not all the way, because I'm gonna use double zero steel wool and the rest of it. And then we'll get more close to the top. Now this razor blade is done, I'm gonna throw this out. And then we'll grab double zero steel wool and rough up these dots, as well as the etching down here to allow the tint to adhere a lot better than it would if you weren't to scuff it up. So we'll take the double zero steel wool and just go really hard at the dots. The double zero won't mar the glass, so you have nothing to worry about. It will potentially on a Tesla, so do not do this on a Tesla. But the whole idea here is, one, removing any glue from that tint that was on here previously, like I said, I saw a glue, and two, is roughing up the dots to allow the tint to properly adhere to them, creating a nice even finish. So you wanna get a nice even scuff on all of the dots. I'll go ahead and give that a quick wipe, and then I'll go to the front. If you ever do have glue on a frameless door, you're always gonna have the mirror attachment here or some type of pillar here in the way with the gasket running down the front. You're gonna to wanna to take your razor. I'll start in midway, roughly. And what we're doing is we're basically just acting as this is a flat blade by flexing it, getting pressure on the window and removing any contamination. Now the main thing you want to pay attention to when you're taking the blade from the bottom up is to not cut this rubber seal on the top edge. You can see I'll pull it away a little bit. If you come up, you'll slice that right open and it's the last thing you want to do. So then we'll go down across the bottom. There's definitely glue down there. Wipe that off the blade, and we'll hit it again a couple times just to make sure. Then we'll grab our blue hawk towel with the gasket jamming stick, wrap it in there. We'll go down the front, across the bottom, just to get any of that glue residue out so that it does not get into the tint job. All right, now with the BMW, you can even see, look at this gasket here. I don't know if you can see it from there. Someone actually cut the gasket when they were cleaning it or tinting it previously with the tint residue that was on there. So that's something that you would wanna advise the customer of before you move further, because the last thing you wanna do is be blamed for something like that. But pay attention to that and definitely let the customer know before you move forward. So 
We'll just go ahead and wipe off this water residue. Now on the BMWs, this bottom weather stripping, you can actually tuck down with the gasket jamming stick, giving you room to work with. But I'm not gonna do this on the, do that on this car. I'm gonna show you guys with the gasket in the up position and how we're gonna get the tent behind that and how we're gonna get it sealed so that we know it's not gonna peel. So now that we have the whole window cleaned, I'm gonna give it one more quick look. Make sure there's no glue spots. And we look good. So we'll go ahead and lay out the bulk material and start cutting out this window. On this install, I'm gonna be using the Expel Prime Color Stable 20%. I have a 40 inch roll here because I do not have a 20 inch roll. So I'm gonna use this to cut out two windows. I'll spray up the soapy water. Lay the foam on, lining up that bottom edge. Cutting it roughly. Spray the outside, line up the bottom. Once we have that bottom lined up, make sure you have coverage on all sides. We'll mount it in place and I'll cut the excess material off. And I'll roll this up for the next window. Now that we have the bottom edge already lined up, double check it, make sure there's no gaps. We mounted it in place in the center. When you're cutting a frameless window out, you always wanna make sure that the top has no fingers because fingers on the top means that the film is pushed towards the upward position and you want it to be the way that you're going to install it throughout the process of cutting and shifting it to ensure it stays in a proper position. So we have most of that pushed down. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the front edge from the bottom and I'm gonna leave it at half an inch from the top. So I'm not gonna cut all the way up because you can see right here it goes up and then it curves in. So we're gonna replicate that when we do the final touches. So now that we have the front edge cut, we're gonna release that squeegee mount by spraying soapy water between the film and the glass. And then I'm gonna go ahead, before I cut the back, I'm gonna shift it forward about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Once you have it shifted forward about an eighth to a quarter and the bottom is lined up, you're gonna mount it in place. Again, across the top, down the back, as if you were installing it. Leaving the bottom area, we are gonna have to shrink that. So we have it squeezed in place, shifted forward. We're gonna cut the back edge, nice and straight and consistent. And once you have the back edge cut, we're gonna release that squeegee mount by spraying soapy water between the film and the glass. And what we're gonna do is line up the bottom edge and we're gonna create a very micro gap on the back. You wanna make it as if when you were installing it, what you want it to look like, but slightly bigger than that. So you have a hairline gap and then you just shift it forward ever so slightly more. So when you install it, the key here is when you install the piece of film after cutting the top edge, when you're putting it in, you're gonna be dropping the film down lower than what it is right now. And it's gonna be moving back a little bit because of this curve. So if you line this curve up perfectly, but if you were to bring it down a little bit, then you'd have a gap here. So you gotta move it back slightly. And that's just the science to it. So shifting, leaving the small gap on the back. So when you install it, it falls perfectly into place. So once we have the bottom lined up and that small gap there, we'll go ahead and squeeze you down, down the side, across the top, as if we were installing it, the motion that we would go. And now we'll cut the top edge. So when you cut the top edge, you wanna pay attention to starting at the beginning of the glass, where the rubber meets. Don't cut the rubber, but you wanna make sure you push the film up, up to the top edge, go in, cut it nice and consistent. All right, so now once you have the top cut, we're gonna pull the material off and round out the edges. But before you pull the material off, the main thing you wanna look at is this top corner here. So what we can do to make sure that when we're freehand trimming this, that we get as close as possible to that radius is you can just do a really rough cut. Try not to cut lower than what you did, but just trim away the excess material 
hanging over the edge. And now we can use that as a guide and make a really nice tight radius when we do that final trim. And the same thing up here, we start, we have it all the way to the front. So we know that when we cut it, we're going to cut it forward with a little kind of like a piece sticking out rather than a straight edge. So let's pull this off and I'll show you rather than trying to explain that. So we have the front edge and then where it curls in a little bit. And even on the front of this, you can see the glass curls down a little bit, which it does on the front of the vehicle. So we're going to continue that, but we're going to continue to go forward and then wrap back. That's kind of how the pattern goes. We'll make it a little cleaner. And that's going to stick into the front edge of that top front. We'll clean up the, the back radius nice and tight. And then the bottom corners. Now the bottom corners are very important, especially on a frameless window when it's moving a lot. You don't want them to be rigid at all, nice and rounded. Because those rigid edges is what will cause a peel to happen. So we have all the radiuses cut, all the sides cut. This is ready to install other than the fact that we have to shrink it. But what I like to do before I even shrink it is I'll soak the window up. I'll lay the film on the outside as if I were installing it. And I'll just line up the sides, make sure my top radius is nice. That's a pretty good. It could have gone a little higher, but that is acceptable. And my top edge looks good. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount it to be shrunk. And to shrink a frameless door window, you want to overhang the top and the back edge. You want the front edge laying flat, not overhanging. So what we're going to do is squeegee across the top, just like we did each time we made a cut. Go down the back. And what we're doing is our bringing our fingers to the bottom so that we can shrink them downwards with our one inch, roughly three quarter inch uh, gap across the bottom. And there's not many fingers on this, but you do want to shrink them. Since we aren't tucking that weather stripping down, you want the film to be as tight as possible, fitting to the glass. To be extra careful, we can even hit this with a little bit of a snap curl, which I don't do often, but it is the winter time. So we want to avoid any issues. What we'll do is we'll pull the film up, heat it very slightly. And that just adds a little bit of an extra shrink to the material. to ensure when you install it, it curls nice and tight to the glass. So we're gonna go ahead and spray this up, mount it on the outside to be installed. So just like any other vehicle, even if it's a frame door, you're gonna leave a gap on the top about an inch. You can even do it lower, and then you're gonna overhang the back. If you're using a peel board, then that's a whole nother story, but this is how I do it, using the glass on the car as my peel board. We'll scoochie across the top, wipe the top with my hand, Make sure you squeegee all the residue off because it could contain contamination. And then we'll do a spray squeegee spray. Limiting as much water on the door panel as possible. If this is a Porsche, I just heard from a guy that if you get water on a Porsche, even though I did a Porsche Carrera the other day, he said water got on the door panel when he was tinting a car and the memory foam in the panel actually started swelling. So be very careful, but these door panels are safe to get wet. Now when I'm doing this on a frameless door, I like to use my easy reach to open up the front because that can be a tight area causing the film to grab once it gets in there, especially if it's hot. So I'll open that up, spray some soapy water, do the same across the bottom very lightly. I'll miss the whole window and then I'll squeegee all that off. And then we'll do our final spray. It's cold here, so I'm not gonna spray too much. Definitely enough slip solution in my bottle. Pull the liner. Spray it up. And then we'll grab it just like we're just like we're bottom loading, because technically that's what we're doing with the frameless door. 
pulling the whole liner off. Focus on getting the front bottom corner in first into that front gasket. And if the back starts to lay, you can go ahead and lay that. Don't let it lay on top of the gasket, like on it, but above it is okay. We're gonna overhang across the top a little bit, but we're gonna open the front gasket with the easy reach as well as the bottom front and allow that film to lay into place. It is a little finicky on the front because that gasket is messed up from the previous person. So that is gonna cause a little complication here working with this. But once we have it down there, you can line up the remainder. Make sure that you're opening the gasket on the bottom to accept the film from dropping in or for dropping in. Do some final adjustments. You can see on the front edge, it's tacking up there. That's what I was referring to with getting that soapy water in there. And uh, as I'm doing this, I just realized that I ended up using a bottle that had Dawn soap in it. And that's a really good example. Dawn soap tends to be a very heavy degreaser and uh, it can cause the film to either be too slippery or tack up too quickly, which it is tacking too quickly for me. But I do have a nice tight gap here. And uh, move it around a little bit. The whole idea is to get as close as possible to the edge, but not too close. Because if you get too close, then you have complications with it rubbing on the, the rubber seal right here when it, the window rolls up and down or the door closes and opens. So as tight as you can, but don't go too crazy unless you're gonna be filing the edge. And even when you file the edge, you could have an issue with the uh, door peeling at the top edge over time. So once we have it into an acceptable position, we'll go ahead and start squeegeeing. We'll start from the front, light stroke, just to get the majority of the water out. And then I'll do harder strokes as I go when I realize that the film's not moving as I'm squeegeeing it. Go down the front. Now, you don't want to go across the bottom yet. You don't want to push down into the bottom yet because the lower weather stripping is putting pressure against the film. So if you go and push down, you may cause a crease from the film pinching. So what you got to do is take a tool like the Easy Reach, open that up, and then you can push it down because it gives away for the film to flow and the water to release. Now the last part that we have to focus on is the front bottom corner. We're going to take the easy reach. We're going to start from the top and push that down and across the bottom. And sometimes you have to go from the bottom into the front, which that did the trick and it pushed the material into place. And then we'll go ahead and push out the top edge with the gray lid coat card wrapped in the blue huck towel and the heat gun to seal that up. So now our last culprit is gonna be the inconsistency in the dot matrix. Now you can already see that the it laid down pretty nicely. It's actually laid down very well on this because I scrubbed it so much with that double zero steel wool. But we're gonna hit it with the final step and I'm gonna heat it up here. One thing I did see is Dean Mitchell, if you guys know him, he said to squeegee up to the edge of the dot matrix, heat it up from the outside to the point where you see the water boiling between the film and the glass, and then you push it out with a yellow turbo squeegee. But um, this seems to be laying down very well, so I'm happy with that. But I'm still gonna do the same method a little bit. I'm gonna heat it up from the outside, and then I'm gonna push it with the yellow turbo. The reason I use the yellow turbo is it's very flexible, and it gets in between the dots, the channels of them, and really pushes the film and causes it to stick to the glass between the dots. That's actually a perfect dot matrix and that's how it should look. So the last step here with, with a frameless door window, check it over, look for any imperfections, and the key is to heat the bottom as much as possible 
to ensure that when you open the door and close it to pull it out of the shop, the window doesn't peel. So you could either sit here for about five, 10 minutes and heat back and forth, back and forth until it's hot to touch. You may, may get some fingers to pop up. You can see right here in the center, we have some water residue, it's not even a finger. I'm gonna take the gray Laco card from the inside while I'm heating on the outside and just simply push that down. And we'll do that across the whole bottom just to make sure there's no water residue since we didn't tuck the gasket on this car. And on the front here, I still see a very slight finger. It may need an excessive amount of heating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a heat lamp on the outside of this door. I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and this window will start the curing process where the film will actually start to form little water bubbles throughout the whole entire material. That's how you know the film's going through the drying process and the water's consolidating and then evaporating through the material. So I'm gonna do that and this window will be done. And that's how you tint a frameless door window with the dot matrix on the BMWs. Any other frameless door window is the same. They just won't have the dot matrix. So it's the same exact process, the same shifting method. Follow that and you can do any frameless door window. I'll see you guys in the next video.